There are a ton of ways that you can make money with programming that are outside of like a typical nine to five job. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the five ways that I see that if you know how to code, you can make more money. And so if you don't know who I am, I'm Raymond Jones. I quit my job at Easy Post and Citibank full-time nine to five. I was paid you know, very, very well and um, quit that job to start several businesses, one of which where I build out applications for small businesses, you know, that was really nice. In this video, I wanna like break down the ways that I'm seeing that you can make money as a programmer if you do have that skill set. So let's get into it. Now, the, the first one that I wanna talk about is an education business, right? So there are several different types of businesses that are already doing this. Um, if you know Neat Code, he is a business. He teaches you um, how do you pass your interviews? How do you pass the lead code parts of your interviews? He teaches a little bit of system design to uh, programming syntax and all that. Um, Hello Interview. These this is this is a uh, company founded very, very recently. Uh, and I think in the past year has shown up and they offer mock interviews and they also build out like really nice guides on how to crack system design. And there's just a ton of other like mock interview sites. Um, there's SAT prep. If you've also like kind of studied for that, if you know that like there's this business model is like, you know, something, but essentially the kind of thing is that like, if you know how to program, if you know how to uh, make content too, or if you know like marketing, you can build out this business, right? If you know how to code and then you just also just have someone who can handle the marketing for you or the content creation, you can make upwards of a hundred million dollars a year. For sure, Neat Code is for sure pulling in a million dollars a year just based off like his numbers. And he could be doing more, but you know, he's not on that business side. He's doing everything himself. And so he's gonna be probably slowly ramping up in that direction if I were to guess. But the kind of big thing though is just that like if you know how to code, if you've worked at Google, you can show people like, hey, like I can just show you how to get into Google. I work at Google, I can tell you how to do, and you don't have to spend five years failing and trying to figure it out yourself. You don't have to spend years being demotivated, being distracted. I'll just help you get into Google. I already know how to get into Google. You don't know how to get into Google. Let me show you how. And that's a pretty compelling argument, which is why these companies, which is why these companies like Neat Code, Hello Interview, and all these mock interview websites are able to profit um, and they, you know, they are able to exist. And so um, this is one kind of path that you can go out, you know, kind of go the route of education. If you're okay teaching people, if that's something that you find enjoyable for something that you like and yeah also curiously you know this was like a business model that i did for a little bit too where i was teaching leak code system design how do you actually pass interviews and things like that the second way that you could just make more money as a programmer is that you get a raise or some kind of promotion and this is like the typical nine to five this is like something that you probably already know so i'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it because it's this is like just so obvious for everybody it's go to college graduate get a job do well at the job stay at the company forever get promoted Promotion, get promotion, get promotion, finish your project, get the job, you know, do well, do well, do well, get an extra raise off those promotions and then you make more money. The, uh, this kind of idea, again, not going to go into detail on in it, but it's a solid way and it is, it does work. There are people who stay at their companies for 10 years, they get promotions or they just stagnate, never get promoted and they just collect the paycheck. So that's the income level that they want to do this. The ceiling of this one, if I were going to guess is probably going to be about, you know, if you're, it really depends on your range, but it could be from hundred K a year to, you know, 500 or a million dollars a year. Um, depending who knows the second one it requires a lot more work and it's that you switch jobs now switching jobs requires a lot more work it's harder because now you have to study leak code you have to study system design you have to study the behavioral interviews right you have to do mock interviews you have to actually like practice get those muscles working on how you're going to be communicating how are you going to be talking about like the projects that you're working on and so it's a lot more work but you also get just more value from it and this is the path too that i went over like two years ago so when i quit Citibank, i decided to move to easy post i got to get a shift of work culture i got to work on different projects i also got paid more and it was a pretty nice deal if you say if i were to say so because i only spent maybe you know 200 hours like doing leak code like maybe like you know two months of leak code and i was good enough to ace their coding interviews i was good enough and i got to have like just a nice quality of life boost from that and so um, this is like the other path that everybody knows about. Everybody knows that's a thing. Um, I have tons of videos on my channel about leak code, about system design and um, how you can improve, um, how I you know, solved a thousand leak code problems and all of that. So if you want to check those out, you can go check it out on the channel. Um, if not, we're going to be going into the more interesting stuff that I think that software engineers just aren't really doing, right? Which is freelancing. If you are a entry level software engineer, I think it is going to be really important that you are freelancing more often. I like, especially because 
you don't have any experience. Like if you're trying to get your first programming job, you don't have any experience doing contract projects for some small business, for your friends, for your family is really good because you just build experience and companies love the fact that you say, hey, I have an internship. Hey, I have experience building up projects. Hey, I've actually worked with people and built things. And so it's really nice too when you can actually talk about the things that you built. And so if I were like just, just starting out with no experience, I would be freelancing. I'd be asking my friends, hey, what do you want me to build? I'll build anything. I got time. I just graduated. I'm on summer break. I'm on winter break. I've got time, I can code some things out for you, right? And if the case that you're not coding stuff out, well, then you're just probably just not that good at programming and you probably are not gonna get a job anyways because you're not good at programming. The kind of theory here is that like, we're just gonna be going through getting experience, right? And so, and if you look at these positions too, like let's look at this role, right, for Google. Um, you wanna work at Google, okay, that's cool. Like, how do you work there? We'll meet the qualifications. What are the minimum qualifications? Let's look at these. Uh, you have to have a bachelor's, okay, good, graduate. Two years of experience in a programming language. Okay, how do you get two years of experience if you don't have a job, right? It's, it's so weird. Well, you work, you do contracts for two years. Right. And you make sure that you're hitting these, you make sure you're using with data structures you make sure that you're building large scale infrastructure. Right. If you can, if you can get your hands on that, try to do it, try to get a master's degree, right? Uh, two years experience. Right. But like the kind of deal here is that you just have to meet the requirements, meet the qualifications at minimum, even if it's for a campus job, too. Right. So if we type in campus here, which I don't think they're actually hiring new grads, but what you're going to see is what you're going to see is that they're not asking for a lot of years experience. That's it. That's it. They just want you to graduate. Um, you don't need years experience. And so you can just talk about the projects you've built and you can talk about the actually working with, you know, with the actual, you know, contracts. And so, um, you know, the reason I mentioned this is just that, like, is that you can do this route if you're trying to go here and and it works. Um, it's unfortunate that most software engineers don't kind of do this um, or most beginners don't do it but it's a great way. And, you know, if you're actually doing this seriously, this can be solid way that you could make some side income as a programmer. Um, so you can go on Upwork, right? This is a website that has freelancing. You can create a profile in here, have it good. Again, watch some other YouTube videos um, on like how do you actually set these things up. But like, this is, this is a platform that I use to find my clients and it worked. I got paid. I did projects. I get to put those on my resume. I got to I get to talk about them when I'm in interviews. And so it, it lets you just take a little stepping ladder up to where you can just get in, get your squeeze yourself in into the field. And it's nice. It works. Finally, the most interesting of the ways that I think to make money and the probably one that what the biggest, the absolute biggest upside is that you launch a startup. So what you're going to be doing is coming up with some idea, coming up with some kind of product. You're going to code it up, build it. It's going to solve someone's problem. And then you're going to be marketing that product out because it's a digital product. You don't need to put any extra work into it, really. And so you get massive amounts of leverage. So you can build a product that solves a problem for 10,000 people. And if 10,000 people consistently use it, you make tons of money. And the ceiling for this, for launching a startup, is a billion dollars a year. You can, there are so many software engineers. So there is this guy who quit his job at Google to do this exact same thing where he says, I want I don't want to work for Google. I want to do my own thing. I don't like the fact that I don't get promoted. I don't like the fact that I am working my butt off and nothing is happening. So he started his own business. And the reason I want to talk about this is that the, the reason I want to talk about this is that there are like, this is just such a massive opportunity, in my opinion, for software engineers, for people who know how to program and for people who are okay with the business side, they maybe are okay partnering with someone who handle like the non-technical stuff that they, that they don't want to do like sales and marketing. Um, and it's really, really good because you already have the skill set, which is like the hardest part of all of this. And then it's, can you develop fast? Can you build the product? Well, are people going to like it? And in this guy's case, I don't want to say this is like a get rich quick scheme, right? It takes years to actually learn this kind of stuff. But for him, he was a Google engineer, super smart guy, of course. And it took him six years to actually make real money. Right? If you look at this, he documented all of it. And this is the, this is the path that I'm going to, by the way, guys, is that I am going like this kind of solo developer kind of route, kind of like you know, working for companies, working for startups, building up the skills. And he made like in, after six years of doing this, he finally learned how to make, you know, about $200,000 a year in profit for after six years. And this is a guy who's like pretty smart. Right. And so um, kind of idea, though, is that like I'm going to guess that he's going to be picking up a ton of skills from doing all of this stuff. And he's going to be a lot better at the business stuff. He's going to be a lot better at building the products. He's going to be learning just a ton. Uh, this money's going to stay with him. And this is why, you know, if, if you're trying to like figure out, OK, well, how do I build a business? How do I actually do all this stuff? Like there's Y Combinator. 
YouTube channel. They founded um, DoorDash. They founded, they are not founded, but like they invested into DoorDash. And, you know, when the company's IPO, they get to pay, pay a ton of money. But they've, they've worked with a ton of really, really big companies. Airbnb uh, was one is one of theirs. And just, I think maybe like 100, maybe 20 others actually that actually IPO'd. But um, if you want to learn how to use business stuff, if you want to actually like kind of dip into this world, I mean, they literally have tutorials. How do you start a dev tools company? Vertical AI agents, how to build the future with Sam Altman. How do you start a company, right? What key terms do you need to know? Like all of this stuff, how do you find a co-founder? And so Y Combinator is obviously like they're trying to help you. They're trying to educate you as much as they can with as many free resources as they can. So that you start a business and you pop off, you launch that startup and then you start making tons of money off of it. But it's not even just Y Combinator. Like this is like this, this idea is not like VC funding in general are looking for people who are doing this stuff. They will toss you money. You will literally build it and get paid at the exact same time. Not a lot of money. You can take your salary to live and then invest it. They want you to invest the, must, the other part into the business. And then there's the other part where you just do it solo. So you're just indie hacking, solo developer, indie hacker, which is using the exact same principles, but you don't have any money. You use your own money. Nobody's telling you what to do. Nobody's, you know, you kind of like are just completely solely just you. There's a website that goes into how do you start? How do you get started? How do you actually like, you know, build out the product? How do you find users? How do you do all of this stuff? The marketing, the sales, design. And now is like probably easily, it's easily, easily, easily like one of the best times to actually be like launching a business. Um, and honestly, honestly, it's just a skill issue. Like the fact that you can't do a business is or a startup is because you just don't have the skills. Neatcode was making YouTube videos for about, I want to say three years before he actually made money off his YouTube channel. And when he did, it was millions, right? Um, this guy who I showed you, the guy who quit Google to start his business, took him six years to figure it out, to make 200K a year. And I'm going to guess that in his seventh year, he's going to be making more because he's going to be learning I'm assuming he's not, you know, complacent. The kind of just big, the kind of big idea with this video is that the kind of big idea with this video that I just want to talk about is just that like, there's like really, really big paths that you can kind of go on, whichever one you want to do, depending on whatever you enjoy. But I personally prefer like the kind of creating your own business side. I like making these videos. I like talking to the camera. Like this is just fun for me. And it's something I want to continue doing. And um, I'm hoping that like, at least if you're thinking about it, if you're kind of have like the entrepreneurial spirit, if you have like this kind of like, you just like solving problems. I don't know, it's, it's just fun for you. I want to kind of just give you like a path of like, okay, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And all of them will lead to you making money because there's already tons of people at the top or even the middle who are making money from it. And the question is just like, okay, well, do you want to invest the time to learn and do these things? And so just to show you again, just kind of personally where I'm at, um, to kind of show you like two types of investment strategies that you could do. I think that you could employ, which is that like as a software engineer, you can go up to making 100K a year to 300K a year, just baseline. And then you can just push this money into buying a house, which will make or help you make more money as an investment, um, index funds, mutual funds, individual stocks. You can do all this stuff and then you could just buy more of it. Just buy, 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 buy. And then this becomes, this is how you reach retirement because these things generate money where you start making more money and they make more money and they make more money. And you live like a very, very nice life. You're able to retire. Um, if you know who Frank New is, if you know who any like the personal finance, Dave Ramsey, whatever, um, Ramit Sethi, but just some of these finance, like personal finance people, um, this is like the path. It works. It's fine. There's like nothing wrong with it. I just think it's personally for me, it's personally just boring. Um, it's not like a whole lot like buying a house is maybe you know, a bit more interesting, maybe. Possibly, I don't know. But um, for me, I'm gonna be doing like the above with index funds. I'm gonna have like some percentage, but then I'm also gonna, just gonna be launching a business. Um, so either we're gonna be working at a startup that I have equity in or um, launching some kind of uh, business on myself or if having a co-founder is gonna be helping offload that sales and marketing side. So I don't have to learn those things. And then I just code because I already know how to do that and build a good product and then it skyrockets. Um, and so, yeah, you're going to be looking at this like it's happening real time because I'm just documenting all of the stuff, like just the same way that I documented my lead code. And the kind of idea here is that, yeah, just doing this, right? Doing, doing, doing this. So um, hopefully this is somewhat interesting to you guys, which is just like, how do you make money into programming? I think this works for side businesses. You can have a side hustle where you just do educating people, where you give out mock interviews. A lot of programmers at Fang, at Google, do mock interviews. They just use some kind of website, They but they are running an education business. They get by giving mock interviews. A lot of software engineers do raises and promotions. Not a lot of them like want to switch their jobs. And when they do, they you know do the lead code, system design, all that stuff. And um, But this is also a total thing that you could do is just you launch a startup casually on the side um, as a side business, partner with someone 
who already understands sales, who already understands marketing, and then just use them to make more money, right? Someone who has a background, you have five years experience in programming, you combine it with their five years experience in marketing, and then you guys are able to make a good product, you're able to get into people's hands and you're able to profit off of it. So um, I see that as like a pretty nice thing for people who are a little bit, you know, different, more entrepreneurial, interested in this kind of stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want to watch more, I just put out a video on artificial intelligence, um, which is, you know, kind of why I think that's going to be massively important into kind of like fitting into all of this stuff with starting your own business. Um, I think my comment here also agrees. And um, I also have a video on leak code, how I solved a thousand problems if you want to check that out. So feel free to watch those videos if you want to switch your job or if you just want to like learn about more about starting a startup. So see you another time.